Well, a very big welcome to you all. Uh, <laughs> it's an exciting day because, as you can see, uh, I have Emma. Well, if you're listening to this, um, you won't be able to see, but if you're watching <laughs> us online, of course, you'll be able to see Emma's in the office in, in Australia, in town. So uh, my name is Natalie Ashdown. Welcome to the uh, Coaching Cafe and welcome to our beloved friend, Emma, who, as I mentioned, is in town. <laughs> yes. And I always do this on Zoom. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I just did that again. <laughs> so it's um it's great to have you all come on the line today. We haven't got um, a full presentation. Well, we did, but it's not loading up. So um, just letting you know that before we begin, uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we're meeting today and acknowledge our elders past, present and emerging and anyone who might be on the line from an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent. And of course, to all our international guests, if you're an Indigenous um, leader of your community, we welcome you. Uh, to the line as well. So today, um, it, it is exciting. I'm probably going to say that a million times, but we're turning our attention, Emma, uh, with you here in the in the room. Uh, we're turning our attention to the final chapter of what makes a great coach. So game, set, and match, uh, and we'll be talking about. Uh, that today and rounding off the conversations we've been having um, over the last few weeks. So it's been wonderful to have everyone uh, connect with us. Um, if you are new to the Coaching Cafe, welcome. Uh, we come together every Friday at this time uh, to share knowledge and experience, uh, to tap into the Open Door Coaching alumni and the broader global alumni that we have. Um, if you are a regular, welcome back. You know we love um, having you here. If you're after your CCUs, um, please just email us at the end of this because I won't be able to share screen this time with you um, but just email us if you want your um, CCUs as well and as always feel free to interact with us in the chat box um, ask any questions share any comments that you have we're more than welcome to um, to have you share those as well so Emma um, as I mentioned we've we've had um, you know over the past quite a few weeks actually discussed each of the chapters of what makes a great coach um, today we're turning our attention to game set and match so um, if you don't mind sharing with the people who are listening, uh, if you don't mind me sharing, we actually struggled with this chapter. Uh, we didn't know what it was supposed to be, what it was going to look like. We rewrote it several times. Um, and we were thinking about what kind of message do we want to really leave people with. Uh, and it couldn't just be a boring old summary of the book. <laughs> it could be something, you know, a call to action or some form of inspiration. So with that in mind, perhaps you can share with us all uh, the, the theme around game, set and match and what it really means and, and like. Yeah, well, obviously it's a play on words with tennis. Uh, mm. With the end of every match, the umpire says game, set, match, but the learning doesn't stop there. Mm. So what do we mean by that? If you think about it from a sporting context, as this book is does uh, allow us that opportunity to be able to reflect on the match so that you either win or you learn. Mm, right. And I love that concept because mm. that is what the book is all about. It's about mm. we, we read a practice and that's, again, we love that they're called practices because the learning doesn't stop there. You don't read the practice on listening and say, okay, like tick the box. Yes, I've got listening down pat. I'm done yeah. with listening. So it is all about how do you improve? How do you take one lesson? How do you take one coaching tool, which I know we're going to talk about on today's uh, coaching cafe, and then practice the tool? Mm. And then what's the feedback from the client? Did the client like the tool? Did the client use the tool? Or how can they implement it in their own life? So. Yeah, and I, I love that. I love that. I hope everyone's writing that down. If you're listening as well, um, perhaps you're streaming on your favorite um, podcast service. We the podcast is going really crazy. Actually, it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, you either you either win or you learn, and that's got a huge application um, to the workplace as well. You were talking to me a lot about at the end of a tennis match, people say game, set, match, and the match is actually over but the learning doesn't stop. And I was thinking that about that, about the context of coaching in the workplace. The coaching session might have finished or the project might have finished or the task we're working on might have finished, but the learning doesn't stop. Do you want to tell us more about what you're thinking there? Yeah, I think at the end of every coaching session, whether you're a sports coach, whether you're a business coach, there's that accountability piece. Mm. There's that... Mm the action steps that you that you say that you're going to work on is not too dissimilar to a tennis match. Mm, it's okay. Yeah. What are the action steps that I now need to focus on mm. to be able to get better, to be able to improve? So I think a 
great coach has to have tools to be able to ignite that motivation, to be able to check accountability, to be able to check, you know, I know uh, one of the coaching tools you taught me back when I was saying today when your son <laughs> was only two years of age was when I first studied under the open door right. coaching methodology. Yeah. But things like from even just um, a scaling question, you yeah. know, checking in with their desire, their commitment, their motivation, their uh, ability to, to act on these things. And I think great coaches need those, those accountability tools so to, to enhance the learning, to provide, I always talk about in the sporting context, the optimal learning environment, mm -hmm. which is exactly the same in the workplace. Wouldn't you agree being able to create those environments? Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that the learning doesn't stop, uh, I, I'm recalling a number of coaching, uh, like when we do our certificate for a workplace business coach, and of course, when you're delivering the high performance coaching certificate over in the USA, it's people uh, might finish a coaching conversation and then they'll say, oh, no, I'm just doing a bit of mentoring now. So <laughs> it's like, hang for a second. So they've been doing this great coaching and then all of a sudden they decide to switch over to mentoring. And we, we say, actually, the coaching hasn't finished. Uh, the person, as you said, still has to go away, be accountable, do some actions, uh, get some feedback from that. Um, and in tennis and in sports, there's a lot of debriefs that actually happen after every match. They review the review the uh, videos and whatever footage, it might yeah. be, the footage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting in the workplace. Um, I don't think that's done enough, actually. I think uh, in my experience, we, we finish a big project or a big task and then we move on without having to do that capture the learning element. Yeah, so, and I think the modern way to do that, if we think about our our course leader as coach, mm. the coaching needs to become part of the culture. The everyday. The yeah, everyday. Yeah. And rather than wait for the 360 to get the match feedback, yeah. you know, I think that's why tennis is such a great sport to teach the workplace, you know, that you're playing mm. every every week. Mm. And so mm. the match debrief happens every week. And so there's that accountability piece to, to improve um, every single week. And I think that needs to happen more in the workplace. Would you agree? I would definitely agree. Definitely agree. I think, uh, like, think about, you know, we're going to book launch um, this Sunday, which is very exciting because uh, you're in town. Uh, so we'll book launch um, again, which will be very exciting. Uh, and I was thinking about it, you know, you do the book launch, you put, tie that up in a bow, you move on. And I was actually thinking about walking our talk here and going, well, what did we do well? What are we doing well so far? What do we need to improve? What, you know, what was great about what happened um, at the book launch? Um, you know, where can we, what are we going to do next? How can we build on that? And it's all of those coaching questions. I'm just talking about the book launch as a, as a you know, example. an example, but it's all of those coaching questions I think that we can really bring out in the workplace, in our coaching, when managers are coaching their people as well. And, and I don't feel like managers spend enough time to just stop and do that reflection, which is really what we're trying to aim here for. Yeah, and in the book, of course, let me uh, look at this, Natalie. Let me just, let me just pick <laughs> Your it book's up. all highlighted. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but one of my favourite uh, favorite sections on this book, actually, before I get to the reflection questions, mm. um, I just want to give a big shout-out to Nick Voluteri, who's... Um, He's, he's quoted in the final chapter. I've got a little bit of yeah, goosebumps yeah. and he's really struggling with his health right now. Oh. So just sending well wishes uh, out to his family. And mm. uh, But his legacy, his legacy lives on through me, yeah. uh, through the people reading the book. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But are you willing to dedicate your life to your profession? What a, what a great question for us to, to reflect on as it mm. relates to games that match, as it relates to legacy. Mm. Uh, and, and he's certainly... Um, somebody where the learning never stopped. He was mm. going to conferences and, mm. you know, I joy to spend so much time with him. But I just, I love some of these questions, the, some of the accountability questions at the end of the book, as highlighted in the book. Here. <laughs> um, you know, what will you do for yourself in the next 24 hours? Mm. We, we're so often as coaches, we're giving, mm. and even in game, set, match, it's it, we talk about coaching as a privilege, mm. as a profession. How many times do we stop and just think about what can we do for ourselves in the next 24 hours? So that's mm. an immediate call to action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I've got me thinking already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of our team members in the next seven days. So yeah. thinking about, you know, our team members, what, what is this something perhaps that, that you've picked up from the book that you could share 
Uh, and who do you think could benefit from these practices within the book? So just again, there's, there's a lot of reflection questions, probably more even in the final uh, game set match mm. chapter than any other of the practices. Yes. Because yes. we're inviting you to, you know, we've also got in the next 90 days, what will you commit to working on? Yeah, so, yeah fantastic. Mm. And it's those kind of questions that I think we can use at the end of any project, actually. So not just, you know, uh, um, so we're thinking about, uh, you know, we've finished a project or we've finished an exercise or something. What, what are we going to do in the next 90 days to actually build on that? And I know there's a number of um, our Air Force friends on the line as well. So um, I'm trying to remember the acronym um, that, that Air Force use, but it's, it's basically a, a review. Um, you, you know, you review what's happened, uh, you identify the improvements, and then you, you know, then you think about how you can move on. So um, all of those kind of things are part of what we're talking about with game set and match. Yeah. yeah. And when you're, I think also, I was thinking, reflecting on this, there's a lot of reviews going to be happening in the workplace around this time. It's not just you know Christmas parties and you know and the like but I think there's going to be a lot of reviews going on and there's there'll be uh we'll come back in the new year and we'll be thinking about setting our goals for the new year etc um what kind of questions do you think other questions do you think people should be thinking about um at the moment Emma like I'm thinking about what are we doing well and you know if we're thinking about going into the new year what do we need to change maybe we don't want to talk about change now but when we come back we'll be thinking about well what did we do well back in 2022 what do we want to change or do differently but other questions that spring to mind for you yeah so I think about areas for development uh, I love that um, mm. and improvement areas of course but I think I just want to touch on one thing you said I think it's it's so important to focus on our strengths. I think in the sporting mm. world, sometimes we do focus too much on weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. So I think just that was a nice reminder of like, like what, what are we actually doing well and taking the time to focus on that because it's so easy to go, we've got to do this better. We've got to improve here, here and here. Mm. Uh, the other ones that I really like, um, what are the obstacles? So what, yeah. okay, you know, yes, this is our current reality. This is where we want to mm. get to, but how do we bridge the gap and what's what is what are the the obstacles that potentially stand in the way uh and then of course what are we doing on sunday we are celebrating, celebrating. <laughs> anyone in melbourne by the way three o'clock the elwood lounge uh please come and join us but it is important to celebrate and acknowledge the achievements um wh why do you think that's mm. important yeah. i think uh, well because we do achieve a lot and we just don't stop uh, and it's and and if we don't stop and celebrate, in my experience, coaching, particularly in coaching executives in the workplace, it leads to burnout. So it's it's that tiredness, that burnout, that continual drive and slog, um, as opposed to stopping and patting each other on the back and really celebrating. Um, and we can do that with our teams. Uh, we can do that with our broader alumni as we're doing so. A hundred percent. It's interesting celebration. It is one question that people go, oh, I don't really celebrate. Actually, I don't really celebrate. So in our coaching courses in particular, that's the question that people go, mm, I don't really do that. And we really try to emphasize um, that at the end of like an extended grow model, for example. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And thank you. Uh, we've got our assistance here from, from uh, Ian. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, the I was thinking about the, e, the Air Force acronym um, that, that is built into everything uh, that Air Force do, and it's PBAR, PB, P. P-B-A-R, so plan, brief, act and review. So building that into everything that happens. So thank you <laughs> for helping us out there. And um, Emma, I'm just thinking the time that we've um, got available, you know, if we're reflecting on uh, what we've achieved uh, with what makes a great coach, um, but, but not only like in writing the book, but the reflections and the learning that we did together throughout the book as well, uh, that's one of my biggest things. I think I got to reflect on each of the practices and what do they really mean? What's been some of your biggest lessons when it comes to what makes a great coach? There's been a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to narrow it down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think one of the, the biggest lessons was about finding the process that works for you. Mm. So you helped unlock in me the best way to communicate my message mm. so i definitely had a, 
crack at writing this book mm. six years ago and <laughs> right <laughs> prior yeah. to you know you beautifully what's the word coming in and I was trying to think of an aeroplane analogy but anyway and, and sort of picking me up but uh but basically when through our conversations and when we'd say things like well what does passion really mean and yeah we, and dialogue mm -hmm. so I that's the one of the biggest learnings mm. uh, for me was through dialogue with you oh well then this happened and they had this coaching story and mm -hmm. then and then i tell another coaching story and you were like that's a great story but that i'm not sure that 100 relates to this practice yes, yes right and then so we but then we were able to park it into another practice yeah but i think through dialogue i was able to unlock what the practices really meant to me and my experience and i wanted to have that to go along with the data. Mm, and, mm. I, and I didn't want it just to be at the Emma Doyle show as well. Like, oh, this mm. is what I think makes a great coach. Mm. Uh, so that was one of the biggest things. And I think anyone listening out there, have a reflection on what works best for you. Yeah. yeah. On if whether it's writing a book or whether it's doing the project. And that comes back to your strengths as well, doesn't it? Like being mm. able to know yourself almost better than you know anyone else knows you mm. which is not easy especially the chapter around belief and again a shout out to Nick Volatieri like he I was I was working with a client just this week and the one thing I learned from him was he made every player feel like they could be a champion yeah. when they had left there was mm -hmm. a, that feeling of of this person I believe in this person unconditionally mm -hmm. and so I finished um, a coaching session and I and my it was in person, which was lovely, so lovely to get to be back in person. Sorry, just, <laughs> just poke, poke Natalie again. I know this is an audio podcast, but uh, and uh, I, I she was just going to leave, and I was like, no, this this I got to I have to finish with that feeling. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So there, there's some of the things. What about you? What, yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I think the lessons that I got out of um, the writing the book and, as you said, the conversations were just that chance to really deeply reflect on our practice. So when we think about empathy, for example, empathy is very important to me, um, but what does it actually mean? So it was a chance, like you said, with belief to go, yeah, sure, we all believe in, we all believe in our clients, don't we? But, but for me, it, and that's what we've tried to emphasise, is it's not just saying, oh, great coaches believe, tick, I believe. I really thought about what does it mean to believe in a client or what does it really mean to be listening uh, or demonstrate empathy or you know, my favourite curiosity. But then it, for me, it was about, Am I doing that? Am I demonstrating curiosity? And if so, how can I get better at that as well? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we've um, not just ticked the box on the practices, but we it's been a chance to really explore, uh, review how we are doing those practices and then, then step it up a level as well, which I think is where that's what we're talking about. Game yeah. set and match is not just, well, we've done the book and that's it. We are actually expanding and exploring our practices as we go along oh so. completely which brings me to the coaching toolkit yeah yeah so yeah. well in one of the many <laughs> many drafts that we had uh the toolkit yeah. was going to be in the book and then you know through our dialogue and discussion mm. uh we have a coaching toolkit that complements the book but it's not in the book mm. because mm. there's so much great content in there and the reflection questions so to improve your practice for example we have an associated over 20 tools that match the 10 practices. Mm. Uh, for example, one of the coaching tools is, is a, a simple tool under decision-making and it's just called um, scenario questions. What's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? And what's mm. the most likely case scenario? So three, I know they're really basic questions, mm. but actually practicing them without jumping in the space yeah. for, a, for a laser coaching yeah. um, scenario is fantastic. And I used it in Palm Springs two weeks ago, first time I ran a three hour workshop on the coaching tools. And it was so interesting having these sports coaches practice just that one tool and having them not jump in the space. Not jumping in the space is the key too, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's um, trying to unlock, as as everyone on the line knows, because you're all great coaches, but um, it's not yeah jumping in and, in and trying to solve those problems or tell them what to do, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, getting them to think about those questions and 
without diving into the space yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. well we'll make the coaching toolkit available we'll let you know how you can uh, get get hold of the coaching toolkit watch out for an email from us or head is it should they head to emmador.com or they do um uh we'll let them know <laughs> <laughs> we'll let them know it's not linked yet okay yeah. it, 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 under actually sorry opendoorcoachingusa.com will there be the, the website that then links to the coaching toolkit. Yeah, and then you'll have the opportunity to buy the coaching toolkit that goes alongside. Uh, and Emma, what's next for you? You're going to be running workshops uh, here in Australia, all yeah. around Australia and, yes. and all around the USA as well. Yes. Uh, to bring the coaching toolkit, the toolkit that sits behind what makes a great coach. Tell us more about that. Yeah, super excited uh, to be working in the women uh, in coaching space. Mm -hmm. So these are work dedicated workshops for women in coaching and flying around Australia starting on the 1st of January in Perth, mm -hmm. uh, then Brisbane, Sydney, uh, Hobart, South Australia, and then finishing up in Melbourne. Fantastic. Uh, and we're going through each, like having people reflect on their coaching practice. So doing mm. a, a bit of a reflection piece mm. and then taking one or two tools and just role playing the tools. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So super excited to be doing that. If any, please reach out if anyone wants me while I'm in your neck of the woods mm. around Australia, if you'd love for me to come and uh, share the coaching toolkit, uh, please reach out. Uh, but yeah, super excited to be now bringing the book to life at another level. Because as we know, the learning doesn't stop there. We don't buy the book and go, right, I'm a great coach. Exactly, yeah. Well, and I mean, it's just an amazing opportunity while you're in town to, uh, yeah, people saying sounds exciting. So uh, we'll be uh, talking about those uh, workshops in the new year as well and how we can bring uh, bring the tools to life. Uh, so, yeah, as Emma said, there's, there's about 20 or more tools that sit under each of the practices and it's a really great opportunity to share your wisdom, knowledge, experience and, and uh, yeah, excited to bring it to life from that perspective. Thank so um, thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks so much, Emma. We're heading off to lunch, so we can't, <laughs> we can't hang around too long. <laughs> uh, no. But I really, uh, really want to thank you all for uh, joining us on these series of podcasts where we really have dug into uh, what makes a great coach and the top 10 practices of the world's best coaches. We will be continuing on in the new year. But for now, it's game, set and match. <laughs> game, set and match. And, uh, yeah, we, thanks, everyone, for joining in. If you are um, going to catch up with us, we'll have our final Coaching Cafe next uh, next Friday where we'll round off the year with all the highlights. Obviously, this has been a highlight, but we'll be reflecting, actually, we did set... At the beginning of 2022, I predict, do some predictions. So we'll be looking at what the highlights and how did I go with my predictions on coaching in the workplace. So and can I just give Natalie yeah. Ashdown a shout out? <laughs> I and, and the entire Open Door Coaching team. I know that this book coming to life uh, wouldn't have happened without you. So just from the bottom of my heart, I know in, I know I've said it over Zoom, but it is different to say it in person. So uh, yeah. and I wanted everyone to hear that. I know everyone on the line knows what an amazing coach you are but to bring out my story and help share my journey with with the world uh makes me just so grateful oh so, thank you well it's been a pleasure like the um the partnering and a lot of people are actually talking to us about how did we partner like what what was this partnering what was this energy so we get to reflect on that in a podcast um later this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully after not too many drinks, but we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been an absolute privilege and I just can't wait for, you know, the workshops to take off next year and for you to really get your message out. It's been a privilege. And so, yeah, thank you. And thank you to all the Open Door coaching teams. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, everyone, enjoy your coaching. Uh, happy Friday to you if you're listening to this on a Friday. Otherwise, uh, happy day to you if you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to this on our, your favourite streaming service. Watch out for an email around um, the what makes great coach the coaching toolkit yep. uh, you'll be hearing more about that um, as well and as always uh, enjoy your coaching thanks for joining us thank you yeah